Gaming Geek here with a video showcasing the ruined bridge spans from Printable Scenery. I also have the scaffolding and support set as well as the ladders, stairs, and gangways. So there's actually three sets from the Shadowfey Ruins Kickstarter. Over here, I do have the rickety lodgings, which was part of another video that I previewed their Kickstarter for Shadowfey. And I used to have the Hermit's Tower, but that was one of the GGGGs. Every month, Bob the Beholder picks one of my Patreon supporters to receive a gratitude gift for being an awesome supporter. If you want to get in on that, go ahead and click in the descriptions below to go to my Patreon page. Speaking of GGGGs, I know I've been saying all month for March of 2021 that the GGGG is going to be a Street Fighter Kickstarter pledge, but it looks like that my delivery is going to be one of the last here in the United States, so I will not get it this month as anticipated. So we're gonna push that over into April to be one of the April GGGGs. And for this month, my Patreon supporters decided on this Prisoner's Tower. I did a video for that a while ago. And if you wanna check that out, go ahead and click here. So I will be shipping this painted set to one of my Patreon supporters. We will be doing the draw this coming Sunday. Again, it is the end of March of 2021. So I really like this set a lot because as you know, a lot of my skirmish games that I play, I prefer to have ruins just because you can have line of sight through the ruins a little bit more easily than you can with buildings. And this set I was really looking forward to and I haven't even printed out many of the buildings yet, but started off with the bridge and the sc scaffolding because I actually like the versatility of something like this more than just straight up buildings. Now the bridge set comes with eight different major pieces and word of warning, I thought it might be faster to print these out than a full building, but some of these pieces are large and takes over 30 hours. So, these prints do not happen quickly. I print all of mine in 0.2 millimeter height, which I think is a nice compromise between speed of printing and the amount of detail that you get. And if you wanna check out the two printers that I have, go ahead and go to this video. But I think these things look really awesome and you can put them on your board in a really different way that provides really good scatter terrain and breaks up line of sight which is important for a lot of these skirmish games. I have my Corvus Cabal from Warcry on this set because they get an advantage if they attack from above. And these pieces are uh, mostly about three inches tall, which is perfect for Warcry. This set would be good for Relic Blade or for Mythos or even sci-fi games like Stargrave that's gonna be coming up. This is a great way to create a lot of terrain that covers up your board. The other thing that I really like about this set is I really love the colors between the wood that's on here as well as the stone. So the juxtaposition between those two colors I think goes super well with one another. And this set is super fast to paint up. I have a painting tutorial at the end of the video if you are interested and you can see that this is actually a really simple color scheme and I was able to paint this up in one afternoon, so very quick. Also, if you haven't done so already and if you're not a Shadow Fay backer, I do suggest go ahead and purchasing the scaffolding as well as the gangways and stair set because it really supplements and gives you more vers versatility. So with the scaffolding and support set, which is some of these pieces here, it just supplements what you have uh, with these more solid buildings and it allows figures to have line of sight underneath them. So it, all of these pieces obviously will be blocking line of sight for any figures that are on the ground. But what I like about the scaffolding and support is that you can shoot through or walk through underneath this scaffolding, which is an added bonus and provides some variety as well. And this is super flexible with how you wanna configure them. I've chosen not to glue the bases to the scaffolding so that I can configure it uh, and maximize the versatility of it. But clearly you can choose if you want to glue the tops onto the support pieces. And then the gangways and stairs set is pretty small, but what it does is it provides you longer pieces because the scaffolding is actually 
relatively short. So this piece is the longest that you're gonna get with the scaffolding. But with the gangways, you're gonna be able to um, print out these really long pieces. And this way you can connect between buildings, different heights like this, have figures run up along here, and be able to spread out some of this train a little bit further because these pieces are longer. So in combination with the ruined bridge set, I think those two sets um, really flesh it out and give you maximum versatility and it doesn't take very long to print out these pieces. So by using the same color scheme, you're able to paint them up really quickly and it all ties together. And I am gonna start printing up more buildings, more ruined buildings. And one of the great things about that is the way that Printable Scenery made these buildings is that they're about the same height. So this is almost three inches for this base. So they come in three inch imp increments. So all of these things sort of flow naturally together and all of the pieces sort of work together. So I love that the bridge set is about the same level as the first level on all of these um, buildings, and therefore I can maximize the versatility by connecting them and being able to create sort of this network of gangways that people can be running along, fighting each other, pushing each other off. And so that I think makes this a really exciting set for your gaming board. So if you haven't backed this Kickstarter, go ahead and check the links below. I do have an affiliate link that gives me a little bit of a kickback if you use that to purchase these files. Or you can wait because Printable Scenery has tons of Kickstarters throughout the year and they typically offer previous ones at a discounted price during those Kickstarters. And then you can jump in on that. I only backed the Shadow Fay Ruins. I didn't do an all-in back of the previous Kickstarter. And I'm fine with that because there are a ton of files, plenty of files for me to work with, with the Shadow Fae Ruin set. So please like and subscribe if this video was helpful for you. Also check out my Patreon page to see what the GGGG is for this month. Stick around if you want the painting tutorial, although I am following the same tutorial that I've given for most of my buildings. Otherwise, happy hobbying, happy gaming. We'll see you next time. All right, so I spray prime all of my pieces, either this slate gray from Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte or with this camouflage dark brown. Rust-Oleum also has their camouflage line of dark brown as well. If you can't find this brand, go ahead and just pick the darkest brown that you can or the darkest gray. And all of the wooden pieces are in the dark brown like you see here and all of these pieces are all painted in gray since the predominant color is gray. So the first thing we're gonna do after we prime all of our pieces is just grab some zinc as well as some slate gray and you're gonna mix it up. I'm gonna use my biggest brush that I have and this is a stiff um, hog's hair brush and just gonna mix some of it up because the Zinc is too dark by itself, and the slate gray is too light. So I just mix it up like this, and this is a completely dry brush. And just going to um, put this over all of the stone. And I'm not too concerned about getting it on the wood because we're gonna go over the wood with brown later on. So this is just getting the intermediate gray and afterwards we're going to put um, another coat of dry brush, a lighter coat, but this is to do that intermediate gray color. So it goes on pretty quick, not a whole lot of detail work in this step. And the ground I'm also going to base coat with the dark brown so I'm not worried about getting that. Although, go ahead and grab the insides of these archways. I don't go all the way into the back of them because the light will only catch the edges like this. So go ahead and do this for all of the pieces. So now that this first layer has been put on, I'm gonna go ahead and just use pure slate gray without mixing. And this is going to be lighter since it's the final dry brush highlight. 
and just be careful not to put too much on and you're probably not going to be able to notice a whole lot through the video but I'm just doing some light highlighting just catching the edges of everything so th this step is super fast because as you can see not doing or rubbing in a whole lot so and I tend to fade and not do the bottom part see how the bottom is a little bit darker than the top and I tend to fade out all of my building so that towards the bottom it isn't quite as light and you have a little bit of differentiation and also if you want you can before this step you can color individual blocks so if you want to put in browns tans just to give a little bit of variation I'm not doing that because I want to get these done as fast as possible and I'm gonna have all of the brown from the wood and the ground to provide different color variations but that's an option that you can use now you want to grab some black and mix it with some of the zinc to make a really dark gray and what we're trying to do is get the same dark gray as the spray paint because all of these support pieces you want to base it in the dark gray and basically you're going to go through the three different colors again you know this dark gray as a base and then mix up the zinc and the slate gray to do an intermediate and then the slate gray on top of this as the final dry brush. And it's okay if you don't get all of the brown because the brown works effectively as good shading, but that's pretty much. I'm not gonna show the intermediary steps because they're pretty self-explanatory, same as all of these, but go ahead and do all of that. This is Burnt Umber Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel is super cheap. I think it's like 50 cents and I buy it at Walmart. I don't even think they sell it um, at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I might be wrong. But the reason why I grabbed this, I have tried other dark browns and they don't go on as well. So this cheap stuff actually works the best for me. And what we're going to do now is sort of the opposite of the gray. Everything that is wood or ground we're going to be painting with this dark brown. And what I do is, again, I just grab some black and darken it up and we are trying to mimic the color of the um, dark brown spray paint that we put on all of the wood pieces. Now we gotta do that for all of the wood that's found here. So I'll just paint it through. I might switch to a bigger brush because there is a lot to cover here. You can decide and again, you don't, you don't have to be like 100% precise. Just as long as you get most of it covered in brown. It's, it's fine if some of the gray is still poking through. Uh, that's not going to really hurt anything. But, and this, this, I keep my brush pretty wet so that the paint flows into all of the crevices. And so we're going to go ahead and do this for all of the wood pieces as well as all of the ground. So let me show you here. So this stuff right here, this dirt, we're going to make uh, brown as well. Make sure you avoid all of the stones that you just painted up going to do these wood beams too so do all of that I'm grabbing milk chocolate and I am switching to a smaller brush because I need to be able to control the painting a little bit more and so I'll grab this and I'm gonna go over all of the wood that we uh, painted with this dark brown and going to dry brush so that I'm not filling in any of the cracks because I want that to remain that dark brown and because the dark brown is so dark we're gonna have to do two layers of this milk chocolate so I'm gonna come back and do a second layer just because it will show up better so just be careful not to get any of the stone 
this should go more quickly than when you had to put the dark brown down because you're just doing highlighting here like this so make sure you get all the spots and I am not painting the ground and in fact I think I'm gonna just keep the ground you know originally I was going to put down some maybe burnt sienna which is a little bit reddish in color so that it looked a little bit more like mud but I'm gonna wait and see I'm gonna put this down first and I might just possibly for the sake of time just keep the dirt all this dark brown instead of doing any highlighting but we'll wait and see what it looks like and draw a conclusion after that so go ahead and do this for all of the wood and that includes all of the wooden pieces that go on here that we left off for the sake of more easily being able to paint without getting it onto the stone so for example um, this piece goes on here but by leaving it off we can switch to the bigger brush and just uh, dry brush this whole thing which I'll do later but that's basically what you want to do two coats of that now that we have two coats of the milk chocolate on all of the wood we are now going to do the final highlighting and that is done with honey brown so you don't want as much so keep your brush fairly dry and I don't do the whole area but just touch up along the edges where it tends to be more worn out and it might be hard to see in the video but just picking up the highlights here and that's pretty much it so go ahead and do that for all of the wood we're gonna use antique gold for all of the ropes. Obviously you can use other colors like orange or dark red or something like that, but I like antique gold because it sort of pops out a little bit more. Really quickly just go over these. I'm not too concerned about coloring it completely because I do want the braiding of the rope to show up. So this actually is a pretty quick process. Now, if you want to, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to, um, beyond just showing you this, is you can um, hit up all of the rivets or nail heads with either black or silver. I prefer black because I actually don't think um, the metal nails that they used in fantasy settings would have been silver, but would have been just a uh, black metal but you can use whatever you want. You really can't see the black very easily. And in a lot of my other projects, I don't even bother doing this step, but figured I'd go ahead and show you in case you wanted to do that. Final step is gonna be just gluing these wooden things in place because I really have no reason to disassemble these, um, even for storage or for carrying. There's no advantage to keeping these separate and because for me um, I'm always going to have these slots on here it's just beneficial for me to go ahead and glue them on now these platforms I'm not gluing on because I want to have the flexibility to configure them any way that I want but for these bridge pieces I do go ahead and just glue all the pieces on and I did print out a couple other extra slats like this that I can just place randomly uh, across the bridges. 